This is Worldview and thank you for joining us once again live from our studio in Johannesburg. I'm Yvonne Katsande. Now in today's topic, we talk about the Ubuntu Party, a South African political party founded by uh, the author and songwriter Michael Tellinger based on the principles of Ubuntu contributionism. The party aims to introduce 100% employment by closing down the South African Reserve Bank and replacing it with a people's bank that will grant interest-free home loans and fund massive public work campaigns as well as to provide free electricity as ESCOM, the state-owned electricity utility that is owned by the people of South Africa. Now today we talk to Michael Tillinger to ask him and perhaps you know what his preparation is for the upcoming election that is 2016 elections here in South Africa. Good evening, welcome once again and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Yvonne. Great to be back. Thank you. Now, we're gearing up for 2016 now. We're getting closer and closer. In fact, it is actually the close of the year. What do you actually mean by Ubuntu contributionism? Contributionism is a, is a word that I came up with as a modern version of Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu is an ancient African philosophy. Uh, we can't go back into the past. We live in this crazy modern world in big cities, giant metropolitan jungles. We can't really go back to... Uh, what the Ubuntu philosophy embraces in its original structure. So contributionism is really what it, exactly what the word says, where people contribute their talents and skills to the benefit of everyone in their community. Contributionism, contribute. And, uh, and it's really a system that starts to move very rapidly in a direction to eradicate money completely. And I must say this right up front. The Ubuntu party pulls no punches because it's a philosophy. It's, uh, our philosophy is based on ancient civilizations, the knowledge of the ancients, which was very profound and very connected to everything around them. And they didn't use money, and yet they lived in abundance. They had everything. They li we live on a planet of abundance. So you are trying to actually eliminate the paper money. Yes, eliminate all forms of money altogether. But we can't go from zero to hero overnight. So there are various steps that we need to take. And slowly but surely, people realize, as we move through these phases, without any effort at all, people realize, oh my goodness, I see what you mean. We don't need money. We need each other because money does nothing. People do everything. And they start realizing that it is us working together with, uh, through this system. In working in cooperation as opposed to in competition, we create abundance for each other and everyone else around us. Okay, we, we have a small town here in South Africa, Orania. We were discussing about it just yes. before we started the program. And they have <laughs> some sort of like a similar setup where they have their own currency in that town. They have their own things going on. Is this the same type of model that you are trying to come up with or does it somehow interlink with not, your not views? Not really, no, not really. Orania is a, it's an exclusive, uh, a bit of an elitist place. Um, and it's just like the kibbutzes in Israel. Um, and this is what I refer to as self-sustained communities. Ubuntu and contributionism is not about creating self-sustained communities. You know, we're sustaining ourselves. It, it's not a nice word. We're hanging on for survival. We, we live on a planet of abundance. Ubuntu and contributionism, the Ubuntu party plan of action is to create communities of abundance where we create collectively so much that we don't know what to do with it. And therefore we can export it and eventually give it away to all those around us that need it and are prepared to join us in our contributionism philosophy. Okay, now how realistic and viable and also sustainable is the idea of providing free electricity and 100% employment by closing down the Reserve Bank? Well, that's a, a simple, it sounds like a simple question. Unfortunately, it has a, a long and involved answer. I'll give you the, the, the one minute answer, which hopefully the people will go onto our website and read more. There's a lot of information on the Ubuntu Party website, mm -hmm. uh, ubuntuparty.org.za, for those that want to go and read for themselves. And have a look, it, yes. It'll, it'll, you, you'll read for, for weeks on end a lot of information. But just very quickly, remember that ESCOM is not a government department. It doesn't belong to the people. ESCOM is a private corporation. Very few people understand this. ESCOM's intention is to make profit for its shareholders. At some stage, our government sold ESCOM and turned it into a private company. The coal that powers ESCOM, who does the coal belong to? The coal in the ground. It should belong to the people, and yet it doesn't. It belongs to private corporations called mines, 
coal mines. And these coal mines are all about creating profits for their shareholders, most of which are overseas. So as you can see, what our government has done suddenly, it's sold our, our electricity, turned it into a private corporation. We're paying amongst the highest electrical prices in the world for electricity. Our coal that's powering the plants that belongs to the people, no longer belongs to the people, is now sold to ESCOM and they charge us for all this electricity that should actually be free to the people. But that is not really what I'm saying. There is technology, there's hydro turbine technology, there's other exotic technology and researchers and scientists that have developed technology that creates energy and creates electricity. Free energy devices have been around for more than 100 years, they've been around for thousands of years actually, but from Nikola Tesla in the early 1900s that gave the world free electricity and was shut down uh, by the powers, by the, the, the bankers, um, uh, we know that free electricity exists and the Ubuntu party's plan of action is very simple. It's to invite the scientists, to invite the inventors to come into our towns and villages and our cities and give us the devices so we can share it with our people. Once we install it... With no cost incurred whatsoever, is that what it is? Well, remember, once we put it in and it operates, it runs, if you put hydro turbines in the river, the river doesn't charge you for the electricity. All you do is maintain the turbines and the electricity is free. So our plan of action, actually, since you brought it up, our plan of action for 2016 local municipal elections is very simple. Every town should have its own private electricity supply that belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the municipality or to the government. And that electricity supply, once we provide that electricity supply to the town, it belongs to the people and it becomes free to the people. And that electricity becomes the platform upon which we build our community projects, which also belong to the people, every single one, not the government or the municipality or private companies that live, that work in Switzerland, that operate from Switzerland or America and use our people as their slaves. So we're bringing everything to the ownership of the people in their communities, from the governance to the community projects and the creation of everything from food and water and and healthcare and woodworks, metalworks, dairies, bakeries, everything you can imagine as community projects that belong to the people and the electricity is a platform. Once we've provided our own electricity, we have a very, very good chance of achieving anything we set our mind to. And also inviting, like I said earlier, inviting these amazing people from healers that can cure cancer. We know that these people are out there but okay. they've been blocked by the drug companies from, from curing people. They create laws. Our government is constantly creating laws and regulations that you can't do this, can't do that, while the drug companies are poisoning our bodies every day. And okay, and about the standard, the Reserve Bank, actually. Talk yes. about, a bit more about closing yes. down the Reserve Bank. How will that actually okay. work? That's very important. Thanks, everyone, for bringing me back to this, because I can go on a tangent. <laughs> Um, so uh, remember that the Reserve Bank is a private company, it, uh, once again, just like Eskom, it's a private corporation that does not belong to the government. It belongs to a bunch of private owners that, that we'll never know their names. And they run the South African Reserve Bank from Basel, Switzerland. That's the head office from which the South African Reserve Bank is run as a company. And our government borrows money. It allows this private company to create money for South Africa. It's, it's insane. It's insanity. It's like saying Edgars or Anglo-Americans should now suddenly take over and have the exclusive right to create money for our people, for our country. So the government is the, in is the, is the intermediary that then treats the South African population as the slaves that have to borrow money from, from the central bank and through all their private banks, the Standard Bank, Ned Bank, ABSA, all these banks, private corporations, their main objective is to create profit, not to help the people or to help the country. So, once you know this, you realize that the Reserve Bank is the highest authority in the country. They control the government. Mm -hmm. The government does not control the Reserve Bank. This is a huge shift that people need to make in their minds. The moment you replace the Reserve Bank with a People's Bank, that's not the solution, but it's the first very important step to take the lid off the pressure cooker mm -hmm. and to release the stress and the anxiety and the misery from millions of South Africans. Mm -hmm. There is the, the People's Bank. We can create our own money. Thank you very much, Reserve Bank. Shut you down. Go back to Switzerland. We can create our own money as the people of South Africa. 
right. and be happy and, and be yes. free from all these borrowing and loans exactly. and giving back with interest rates as well. well. Th this is the key thing. If, if we have a people's bank and we issue our own money, there's no inflation, no taxes, no fees, no levies, nothing. Why? Because we create the, the money and we don't have to pay ourselves back any interest. Mm -hmm. We're not a corporation. The Reserve Bank is. Okay. Now, some observers have branded your highly idealistic, if I'm, allow me to say this, and perhaps utopian views as bordering on insanity simply because they don't quite understand yeah. what it is that you're going to. Despite this, it seems interestingly, though, that your unconventional ideas and plans have resonated across the globe. But how have people in Africa, particularly living in South Africa, how are they accepting to your ideas? Well, we have members in every country of the world, the Ubuntu Party and the Ubuntu Liberation Movement. South Africa, uh, next to the United States, are the largest memberships. That doesn't mean we get a lot of money. It just means we have a lot of support on the ground because people are poor. People live in misery. And uh, what, what this is, is all about giving the people the knowledge and the information, giving them the fact about who's really in charge of our country and who's behind the misery has been imposed on our people. Once you realize that it comes from the Reserve Bank and the banking institutions that have imposed themselves on the people, it's very easy to figure out what we need to do to fix and solve the problems. Mm -hmm. So people might call it idealistic. It's just sharing information that until now has been hidden from us. Are there any and particular places, areas mm -hmm. that you've visited in, here in South Africa as part of your campaign program? Oh, absolutely. I've been from, you know, from Soweto to Mamelodi, Pretoria, Joburg, Cape Town, Durban. Uh, and do they understand this clearly? Oh, absolutely. Uh, okay. ab people are... You know, just because people are poor or, or under stress doesn't mean they're stupid. <laughs> and okay. this is the mistake that the government makes. They think that because the people are poor, they're stupid. And I think this might take them by surprise. So our plan of action for the 2016 elections is very simple. We're going after the 12 smallest municipalities. And really, really let me call on the people in South Africa that live in the smallest municipalities. Help us win the election in one of these small municipalities. That's all it's going to take. It's the first domino effect, the first domino to fall. Once we win one municipality and we implement this, this community project-driven Ubuntu philosophy, nothing can stop it. It becomes like a global exponential quantum effect. It's not just an exponential effect. It's actually a quantum effect that once you start providing everything for the, for the people because the people start doing it themselves for themselves, and remember, the funding comes from central government, so the municipalities are getting the money. It's just being wasted and squandered and misappropriated. Mm -hmm. And once, as an Ubuntu political authority, we can open our doors and invite the scientists, invite the inventors of the free energy devices, invite the healers from around the world that want to join us because we've got emails from, or, from them already. Mm -hmm. We just have to invite them to come to our hospitals, turn our clinics into the best clinics in the world. You see how quickly this has an effect on not just the people in your town. Growing um, organic food that, that everyone in our town gets everything for free because that's how we structure our own community. Okay, now you speak of Ubuntu being a political entity. Yes. But um, you have clearly come out and say that you don't want to be called a politician. Of course not. You don't even want to hear people calling you a politician. So yeah. what would we rather call you? I'm a human being. Uh, I think prefer to be, a, be called a teacher. Because I teach people, I give them knowledge and information that allows them to make more intelligent or, or uh, accurate decisions about what needs to be done. If you don't have the information, you can't make the right decisions. If you think that the government is running the country, then, that, then, then you'll constantly think that, oh, yes, our problems are so huge and they're doing their best and they just can't solve the problems because the problems are too big. No, that's the lie. The problems are simple to solve. And the money system and the banking system is the problem. So we need to get rid of the, the central banks, replace it with the people's, people's bank. And that becomes the solution that immediately allows everyone and anyone to go into the smallest town, the smallest village, mm -hmm. and anything you want to do as a community project. This is not about buying a fancy car or a big mansion. It's about starting community projects and public works. That's what the people's bank funds. You never have to pay the money back because it's our money. The money becomes a tool in the interim to make sure that we grow and expand 
everything you imagine from the ballet teachers to the music studios to the arts and culture to the rocket scientists to the to the IT uh, industry that built supercomputers to like I said the, the energy generation the healing of all disease that we know can happen mm -hmm. all of this can happen immediately once you have a people's bank but remember on a local election in a little municipality we can't close the people's bank down so we have a new strategy for 2016 the People's Bank was a strategy for the national elections in 2014. In 2014, yes. So now we, we've got a very simple strategy. Use the free electricity as a platform to unite the people. So our plan mm -hmm. of action is very simple. We win one small municipality. We implement the Ubuntu mayor that then starts to use the funds that come in to, uh, to start the various community projects. And uh, I'll give you an example. Our little town gets three million rand a month. We Do you openly talk about your sponsors? Uh, well, at the moment, the Ubuntu party has very little sponsors. We have private donors from all over the world that make a small monthly contribution. At okay. this stage, it doesn't even amount to 30,000 Rand a month. Okay. You know, so we're just operating on fumes and mostly my own money that I, that I make from my book sales and the talks around the world from where we generate money. That money goes towards funding the Ubuntu movement and the Ubuntu party with okay. some donations from individuals. Okay. Um, now, having spoken about the plans that you wish to implement in the small municipalities, what are your thoughts on nationalization? Okay, very important. You've got to understand the difference between nationalization and ownership of the people. Okay, and, they, and people say nationalization and they don't realize that the government is not a government of the people. The government is a private corporation. Once again, very important. The government of South Africa is a registered corporation. That is the instrument that manages the Republic of South Africa, which is a private corporation. The, there's a difference between the Republic of South Africa and South Africa. Two different things. And this is how the government pulls the wool over the people's eyes. They talk about the Republic of South Africa as the country. No, it's a corporation registered on the U.S. Securities Exchange. Go look it up for yourself. If you look on the Ubuntu Party website, all this information is there. So you know that we give you intelligent information which you can use to make intelligent choices and decisions. Okay. N now... So, sorry, let me just finish. So okay. if private nationalization means that you're giving everything that belongs to the people to a corporation called the Republic of South Africa. Okay. And that has invisible shareholders somewhere overseas. We don't know who the shareholders are. So basically they've stolen everything. So if nationalization you, actually doesn't support the people? No, no. Ownership to the people, uh, owned by the people, means very different from nationalization. Unless you have a government of the people that is a servant of the people and does everything for the benefit of the people, like an Ubuntu contributionism government, that's what we propose, which is a government of the people, a servant of the people. Right now our government is not a servant of the people. It's a slave driver and a dictator to the people that does what they want, mm -hmm. imposes new rules and laws and legislations that that curtails the freedom of the people on a weekly basis. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to touch on a very sensitive topic here. Given the fact that the majority of the black South Africans, right, are not quite okay with the idea of having a white leader ever again, simply because of what they experienced during the apartheid regime, do you think you stand a good chance of becoming South Africa's president? I don't want to become the president. I want to share the knowledge with the people and let the people in their own communities stand up and take this message to their own people and become the, 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 uh, the message bearers, the, 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 the beacons of hope in their own community. I just want to share this information. If, if somehow the collective movement among the people that follow and that resonate with the Ubuntu message, if somehow they feel that they want to appoint me as the president at some stage, I'll say thank you, I'll take, that, I'll take that job or I'll take that position, but I'm not going to impose myself as president. I'm not interested in being the president. Also remember that the Ubuntu plan of action is to close government down, to decentralize government and let people govern themselves in their own communities. We don't need a central government with a dictator that sits in Pretoria or Cape Town telling our towns and villages what they, should do, what they can and cannot do. The, 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 the control of... Uh, and management of every community belongs in the community, not at, a, at some central government level. Okay. Now, there has been a lot of talk globally of Africa ascending, uh, a continent that has emerged more prosperous economically and also socially, politically, of course, which you might not really support. But do you share this optimism on how important it is for young African leaders to help ensure 
a strong future for the continent. It's critical, uh, but they need to first become informed and they need to understand what's going on. Because if they, you know, like, once they know what's going on and they understand who's in control and who runs the country, then it's very easy for them to make the right decisions and hopefully support the Ubuntu plan of action. It's very simple. It's not my plan. It's a universal plan. Mm -hmm. that, that it's, it's, a, it's basically a plan that follows the laws of nature. And so I call it, I call it a self-correcting system that we just cannot screw it up. It's impossible for us to screw it up once we start to implement this plan of action because it just feeds itself by inviting all the best and the most creative people in our communities to contribute towards the abundance of the communities and the growth and abundance on everything from food to arts and, uh, arts and culture, science and technology, all areas. Unlimited abundance because money, suddenly, money is no longer the, the hurdle or the ceiling. You'll never ever say, well, we don't have enough money to do this, because that, that, that's no longer part of the equation. Okay, now two days ago, South Africa woke up to a very disturbing report. That was the Auditor General Kimi Makwetu's uh, audit report, yes. where he has bemoaned the repeated failures of national and provincial government to comply with the Public Finance Management Act. Now, he gave out some figures, which I'll quickly read, where he says fruitless and wasteful expenditure amounted to 936 million rand for the year 2014 to 2015, down from 1.2 billion rand in 2013 to 2014. He also says that in the year 2014 to 2015, irregular expenditure decreased from 27% to 25.7 billion rand, while unauthorized expenditure dropped from 2.6 billion rand to 1.6 billion rand. In addition, the ANC has voted that they, 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 they need new furniture worth 26 million rand and counting and yes. a whole lot of other things that have been raised yes. in the past few days where Parliament is sitting. Yeah. What are your thoughts? What is your take? What okay. is your opinion on it, this audit? Thank you, Yvonne. It's just, once again, it just shows you, it is such a farce. I just get a smile on my face when I read these kind of reports. All of this stuff is part of the circus act that keeps the people trapped in this money thing, thinking that money will somehow solve the problems and, and, and we have to use money to solve our problems. No, money is the problem. Remember, Albert Einstein said, you can't solve the problems with using the tools that created the problem in the first place. Mm. Money is the problem, so we can't use money to solve our problems. We've got we to get out of this paradigm completely and think from, put a completely different hat on and think from a completely different perspective. You cannot repeat the same thing over and over again and expect different results. That's called insanity. It's another Albert Einstein expression. Mm -hmm. So... We've got to come at it from a completely different perspective, and that's exactly what the Ubuntu Party and the Ubuntu Liberation Movement proposes. And not just proposes, we show the steps, step-by-step -step plan of action. And the amazing thing is, all of this kind of money talking and budgets and this and just, that doesn't even feature. But what is your view, especially under uh, President Zuma's regime? There seems to be a whole lot of talk of corruption, yeah. misuse of funds. Of y course. Is it something that can be compared perhaps to the previous regime? Well, it's, as long as you have money, as long as you have money controlling our economy, remember it was set up to do exactly this. So what is happening in our country and all other countries, it's the same. We're not unique here. It's the same in every country, mm -hmm. okay? So, and the system, the money system was set up to achieve exactly this. And it helps, what it does, it keeps the banking families and the central banks in control because they create, they rule by divide and conquer principle. And the people are so stressed about money. Everything is controlled by money, every aspect of our lives. And that's what we got to stop. And once you get into the Ubuntu movement and our philosophy, you realize how simple it is. Mm -hmm. to not, we, remember, we can't fight these guys. They're too powerful. They control everything. We can't fight them. We can't take them to court because they run the courts and the judges. So we've just got to do, what we've got to do is find a new alternative. And that's exactly what we have, a plan for a simple, elegant, and eloquent, a new alternative. Okay. Bypass the system. And it's very, very simple. When people realize how simple it is, that's when they get excited and they want to all join us and... <laughs> Okay, now we've only got a few minutes left to go. Now, in reference to the policies that you've just shared here today,
Can Africa create an environment attractive enough for young people to stop migrating in huge numbers? This has also become a world cry. Yes. Um, after all, migrating to Western countries has probably become a risk, yes. uh, you know, with regards to all the terror attacks that yes. are happening literally every day. Yes. Can we do that? Absolutely. Once again, once we have this Ubuntu philosophy in one town, it will it'll amplify itself, it'll expand overnight and in weeks and days to thousands of towns around South Africa, across our borders and across other continents because it is a universal resonance that beats in people's hearts. One of the, one of the comments that I got during the elections of 2014 when I was on 702 on SAFM, two of the very few major exposures that we had as the Ubuntu party. The, we had 100% support from the callers right across on both stations, 100% support in the message that I was sharing. The most important uh, voice that I heard from one of the callers um, was, this guy is saying what I've been thinking all my life and that's what I want people to resonate with. Listen to what we are saying. Most people are thinking what I'm saying. Don't let the lies of the government think that they will, they will find the solutions. Any politician, any political party that does not tell their people about the central bank and how the banking system works and how they have stolen our country from us is lying to the people. Either they're lying to the people because they don't know or they're lying to the people because they don't want to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. Both those points make them unsavory to lead or govern anyone. Okay, I've literally got one minute left. Any closing remarks? Yes, South Africa is the place from which the new age and the new world will rise. All ancient prophecy suggests this. And let's get our youth. This is all about the youth. This is a call to the youth of South Africa. Find the Ubuntu party, go onto our website, learn what we're all about. Because if the youth does not stand together now and start doing something for the future, you will have nothing left. The government will sell everything from under your noses. You'll spend the rest of your life paying the debt that was created for you by the South African Reserve Bank and the banking system. Find out about the Ubuntu Party and how we can turn this country into paradise. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us tonight on this program and all the best in your campaign towards the elections in 2016. Thank you, Ivan. Well, that's all we have time for this evening. Thank you for watching and do join us again next Thursday, same time, as we bring you more updates on the world's political and current affairs. Good evening.